Okay, so we're going to look at lesson 4-4 four, four over two days. All right, periodic functions, stretching, shrinking, and translating graphs. Day one, we're going to focus on what it means for a function to be periodic. Okay, so a function is periodic if there's a positive number p, a period of f such that that statement's true. Okay, what does that even mean? So what I need you to understand, a period is a length or a cycle of a graph. So functions that are periodic, their graphs repeat. Okay, and that's like really the easiest thing that I could get you to see. So if I'm saying the period here, and we'll find one defining characteristic, so we'll go from maximum to maximum. Then no matter where I am on the graph, I should be able to trace that exact same function, that exact same period, that exact same part of the graph. Okay, so periodic functions are functions that their graphs repeat themselves. So now here on the first one, it's not, I can't see the end to the period on that graph, but we can clearly trace on the second graph where that exact same shape repeats itself. Okay, so P, the period, is the length of one cycle. These functions here specifically, trig functions, we spent a lot of time studying in this course. Okay, this is your first look at it. So if I were to take my highlighter and I'm, right, defining characteristics. So I'm going to go on the x-axis. So from the origin, I go up and then down. And when I get back to the x-axis, that's one period. Now the period on this graph, it cannot be just from this part of it right? Because I haven't accounted for the part of the graph that's underneath the x-axis. So I have to be able that I, I, when you're determining the period, you have to understand that you're starting and stopping at the same point. Okay, so here the period would be four. All right, so anywhere you want to go, if I start here at this like hill down there, so I'm going to trace this graph. Okay, that's a hill, but it's not in the same spot. It's got to be, excuse me, that's a valley. So that wouldn't be it. I keep going. And then I get back to that little hill above the x-axis. How long did it take me to get there? It took me one, two, three, four units. Okay, so anytime you're asked to determine the period, you want to see how long does it take for something to repeat. So if I go from, so down, how long does it take me until I would go back down again? One, two, three, four, five, six units. All right, so as we're counting, one, two, three, four, five, six units to get back to start. This one, the period's a little bit smaller, okay? So if I go from, get the highlighter. So we'll go from like the middle of the M, all right? Now, when we look at our scale here, our scale here is by a half. So you got to be really careful. So here's half a unit, one, one and a half, two. So that's why the period would be two. So the period is the length of one cycle. Okay, so more like, all right, let's, I am going to use this, but... <laughs> If the graph repeats, then the y values have to repeat, right? So if I'm at, let me choose something that maybe is a little bit easier for you to see. If I'm at this point on the graph, every single time I have that valley that's above the x-axis, my y values got to be the exact same. Because if the functions are, re are repeating, right, then my y value has to be repeating. So let me look here. If I look at this point, so let's just for argument's sake say that it's up at negative six, okay? So if I am looking, so the next time I get to this part, right? So I go down, so I have a big decrease increase, a small decrease increase, and then here's my period. So when I get back up here, then I have that same y value. 
okay? Now, you have to be extremely careful here that you're not saying, okay, well, this part here has a y, the same y value. Yes, it does, but it's not the same period, right? In order for us to understand what the period is, I got to go to the exact, I have to trace the exact same graph over and over and over again. So we call that our fundamental period. So the period would be from here to here, okay? So any part that you graph, you have to start and stop with the same defining characteristics. Okay, so I'm decreasing and then increasing, but I can't stop there because there's still this part of the graph that I haven't even considered. Okay, so let's look at what this means. So determine the fundamental period of the function. So I'm just going to go from maximum point to maximum point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Takes me eight units to get there. Okay, you see it differently. Let's go from minimum point to minimum point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't matter which defining characteristic I pick, I have to be able to verify that the period will always be the same. Okay, so now what if I wanted to find what f of 24 is? So looking at this graph, Okay, four, five. I have very limited function values that I know. Okay, so I know what my corresponding y values are from where x is equal to negative 7 to where x is equal to positive 7. That's it. So if I want to determine what f of 24 is, one thing is we could continue to graph it until we got to an x value of 24. It would work, but it would be, make a lot, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do that especially as our function values get larger. So I definitely wouldn't expect for you to graph all the way up to 99, okay? And this is where the period becomes useful. So if my x value is 24, I take my x value, I divide it by the period, okay? So x divided by p. So 24 is divisible by 8. It's 3 with a remainder of 0. The remainder is the critical component of this. The remainder tells us what the function value is. So f of 24, I'll do that at least once a video. So f of 24 is going to be the exact same y value as f of 0. When I look at my graph, what's f of 0? f of 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's take that in. I said back here, if a function's periodic, my y values have to repeat, right? Because that exact same graph is going to continue to repeat itself. So my x values change, but my y values aren't going to change. Okay, let's see how this fits in here. Okay, so I said that this thing here, it's, I said that this piece here, it's like, it doesn't make sense unless you can see an example. So let's see how that works. So I was looking for f of 24. So f of 24 has to be equal to some other x value plus m times the period of 8. Well, how did I get 24? I can take 8 and multiply it by 3. And then I would add 0 to that. And then what's inside the parentheses here gives me 24. So what that means is this, the period is going to repeat itself three times. And then I'm going to land at the exact same spot where 0 was. So if I took this graph and I looked at three more periods of that graph, this point would be exactly where x equals 24 is. Now, zero being my answer and zero being my input is just coincidental. All right, so let's look at another example. So my x value, I take my x value, I divide it by my period of eight. This gives me 12, eight times 12 is 96 with a remainder of three. Okay, so 
What's the piece of information? What's the takeaway from here? The remainder. So f of 99 is going to be equal to f of 3. And when I look at my graph, when x is equal to 3, my y value is 1. So f of 99 has an output of 1. Okay, so let's check this. So f of 99, it's got to be equal to some other x value plus m is the number of times that the period repeats itself times 8. Using that division, we just were able to determine what this would be equal to, right? 99 is equal to my remainder plus 12 times 8. So the 12 times 8 means that the pattern, this period, will just repeat itself 12 times. And then when I get to that third place in the function, that's going to be equal to, that's the y value that I take. And we'll continue to work on this. We'll do plenty of this in class. All right, I had to see where I was in my PowerPoint. Okay, and then lastly, the amplitude or height of a periodic function is given by this little expression. Whoops. M is the maximum value. M is the minimum value. When I say maximum value, it's the highest y. And the minimum value then would be the lowest y value. As long as it's periodic, right, my, all my values repeat themselves. So when I look at my amplitude, my highest y value is up at positive 2. My lowest y value is down at negative 2. So the amplitude of this function is positive 2 minus negative 2 all divided by 2. 2 plus 2, this gives me 4. So my amplitude of this function is equal to 2. Okay? Your amplitude is always positive. All right? And we'll talk about that more when we start looking at graphing these by hand. But your amplitude is positive because it represents a height. Okay? And that makes sense because we're taking a smaller value from a bigger value. All right? Um, what did I want to say about this? Okay, so the period and the amplitude are important because what comes next is stretching and shrinking. Okay, so if we're going to vertically stretch or shrink or horizontally stretch or shrink these graphs, these periodic graphs, then our amplitude and our period are going to change. Okay, so I would like in your notebooks, you can copy this graph if you want, but I would like you to try and determine the fundamental period. So how many units does it take for the graph to repeat? Find the amplitude, highest y value minus lowest y value over 2, and then try and determine these values, f of 45 and f of 75. But these are directly related to the period. Okay, so you need to solve for part A first. Okay, thank you.